Hello everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on radio propagation mechanism. For this video, I'm going to emphasize on free space path laws. I'm going to discuss firstly will be the definition of free space path laws equation, which is also known as FSPL equation. I'm also going to discuss when can I actually use this equation and how we can actually apply this equation to estimate the loss in between the transmitter and receiver. So this will be the objective of this video. If you keen to know more about radio propagation mechanism, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on radio propagation mechanism. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I really appreciate it. Let's come to the quick definition on free space path loss. In any wireless communication, the free space path loss, which is also known as FSPL, we also have another name, which is called a free space loss, is basically the antenation of radio energy between the transmitter and receiver antenna. This, for example, is a transmitting antenna. This is actually the receiving antenna. So what does this free space path loss or path loss actually indicate will be the loss in between the transmitter and receiver. We need this parameter in order to estimate whether the receiver will be able to receive the signal or not. Hence, it's very crucial to be able to estimate the loss that is actually in between the transmitter and receiver. Okay, in fact, this free space path loss is widely used to have some estimate or predict some of the losses in between the transmitter and receiver. Okay, the path of propagation of EM wave must be obstacle free, okay, which means that you should not have any obstacle in between the transmitter and receiver. And by, by having that, we will have the clear line of sight. And basically for this free space path loss, the electromagnetic wave is actually propagated at the free space, which means that air. Okay, so this is the simple definition of free space path loss. The free space path loss is used to predict the strength of an RF signal at a particular distance. Okay, like what I mentioned early on, free space path loss actually estimate the kind of loss in between the transmitter and receiver and the separation between the transmitter or receiver, okay, which is the distance. Okay, so therefore, this equation is used to predict the amount of loss that I actually can anticipate. This is a very theoretical value, which means that you don't really need to go to practical, which means that you don't need to go on a view to measure the view strength, but more or less, you can estimate the loss by working on a piece of paper. However, in the real world, there are actually many obstacles. For example, we also have reflection, we also have unaccountable loss, okay, which they are actually definitely need to be accounted for when we actually want to estimate the signal at any particular location. However, after I saying all this, okay, so this FSPL, free space path loss, is definitely a very good approximation or some estimation, the loss of signal when they actually propagate free space. Free space path loss actually increase okay, with distance. Okay, it means sense right. The further away you are, you can anticipate that the more loss I will be anticipate. So basically, how much to decay basically will be the square of distance okay, in between the transmitter and receiving antenna. Okay, also, the radio wave also spread out by the inverse square law. Another reason to govern the free space path loss will be wavelength or frequency. For wavelength, they basically will be decreased with the square of the wavelength of the radio wave, which we are going to take another look later on. This FSPL, free space path loss, 
is rarely used standalone, which means that we really just use this equation here, but rather as a part of freeze transmission formula, which include the gain of antennas. Okay, it is also a factor that must be included in the power link budget of a radio communication. Okay, so in short, this free space power loss only estimate the loss in between the transmit antenna and also the risk in between the transmit antenna and the receiving antenna. However, we also need to account, for example, the gain of the transmitting antenna, the gain of the receiving antenna, etc. So therefore, like what you mentioned here, this equation is rarely used standalone. We definitely need to include the gain of the antenna to ensure that sufficient radio power actually reach the receiver such that the transmit signal is received properly. Okay, so this will be my final slides on the definition on free space path loss. I hope you have a better idea what is a free space path loss. The free space path loss formula actually derived from this freeze transmission formula. Okay, this state that in a radio system consists of a transmitting antenna. We have a transmitting antenna. They basically transmit radio wave to a receiving antenna. Hence, it will be like a ratio of radio wave PR, the receiving antenna, the power at the receiving antenna over the power transmit at the transmitting antenna, which is illustrated here, PR over PT. The power at the receiving antenna over the power at the transmit antenna, they are governed by this freeze law here. So this DT is basically the directive of the transmitting antenna. Basically how direct, okay, so the more directive the antenna, okay, the, the bigger the number of this DT. Same as for DR, okay, which is for the directive of the receiving antenna, the bigger the number, which means that they actually receive the signal at a particular location, which is very directive. Lambda is a signal wavelength, while the distance D okay, is basically the distance between the transmit and receiving antenna. Okay, so this is the start of the calculation, okay, the discuss the formula of freeze transmission formula. So again, if you feel that this video is helpful, please consider to like this video and also subscribe to this channel. Like what I mentioned earlier on, this is basically the equation that is from here. So there are some rules that we need to state. Firstly, we must emphasize this. Okay, the distance between the antenna, okay, which is the D, they must be large enough that the antenna so that they will be considered at the far field of each other. So in short, this distance between the transmitter and receiving antenna, they must be many, many times bigger as compared to the wavelength of the EM wave. The free space path loss is the ratio of power transmit to the power received, and the loss factor is due to the distance and wavelength. Okay, why? Okay, because we assume that the antenna are isotropic. Okay, which means that every location, they actually receive the same amount of power, for example, and basically they do not have any directive, which means that they don't bin the transmission at any particular direction. All over the antenna, 360 degree, they will radiate up the energy evenly. So therefore, with this, my DT and DR will be equal to 1. As you can see from here, if this is 1, this is 1, I, I will have this outcome over here. And over here, because of this free space path loss, this thing actually reverse. As I illustrate over here, basically will be the ratio of power transmit over to the power of receipt. So therefore, it governed by another rules. Since the frequency of radio wave is equal to the speed of light, okay, which is the C, divided by the wavelength, I actually can rewrite into this equation. In short, C is equal to F lambda, and I actually replace this lambda with respect to C and F, and this will be the outcome of this equation. Okay, before the assumption that the antenna are lossless, okay, this formula also need to meet some assumption. In short, four of them. First, polarization, okay, which means that both the transmit and receive antenna must have the same polarization, whether is it vertical or horizontal. For example, if the transmit is a vertical polarization, then the receive antenna need to be also vertical polarization. Same as for horizontal, if the transmit is horizontal polarization, then hence 
the trans the receive one must be also horizontal polarization. There won't be any multi path effect. Okay, once we have multi path effect, maybe we can consider to use print up model for example. Okay, so if there is no multi path effect, then we can consider to use this free space path loss equation. Okay, the radio wave is sufficiently far away from any types of obstacle that may be at okay, so that in order for it to be in free space. So if you have any obstacle, we need to consider them that they are far away from the path of propagation. Next, okay, we need to ensure that there will be an area around the line of sight up to 0 0.6 of the first snell zone be clear of obstruction. So the minimum okay, so-called line of sight is basically 0 0.6 of the first snell zone. So we need to ensure this in order to apply the free space path loss. Besides like what I mentioned earlier on, there must not be having any obstacle in between the transmitter and receiver. And also we need to have the line of sight. Okay, so these are also the four criteria that we need to ensure so that we can apply this free space path loss equation. Next, let's do some formula here. So this is what I have derived earlier on. So firstly, this is all in ratio. So I convert them into dB. So I just do a 10 log on this number here. Okay, so I bring this two down. So instead of 10, this becomes 20. Can you see from here? So next is basically, I'm going to break them into several parts. Firstly, I'm going to break them into distance and I'm also going to break it to frequency. And this will be a number 4 pi C, which is 3 times 10 to about 10 to about 8 meter per second. So it work up to be 147.55. I also can work up the distance in terms of kilometer, the frequency in terms of gigahertz, then the unit will be 92.45. Again, from here, you can see that I can also use the distance as kilometer and the frequency in terms of megahertz. Then this will work up to be 32.45. Okay, so these are the various sets of equation. For example, you can done your calculation purely in ratio purely in dB. For this tree, you can choose either one based on the parameters that you have, whether your distance is in kilometer, whether your frequency is in gigahertz or megahertz. You can decide which set of equation to compute in order to calculate your free space half loss as dB. Next, let me work up a very simple example to draw a conclusion on this free space half loss so-called discussion here. For example, a radio communication system that has been operating at 400 megahertz and has a transmit power of 25 watts and has an effective range of 2,000 meter. The transmitting and receiving antenna gain are 25 dB and 3 dB respectively. Okay, firstly, okay, we are tasked to state the condition that must be valid to apply the free space path loss model. Like what I mentioned earlier on, the transmitter and the receiver antenna, they must have a clear unobstructed line of sight between them. So this is basically the primary condition in order to apply this free space path loss equation. Next, in order to calculate the free space path loss, as I have mentioned earlier on, you can actually depend on one, two, three, either one you should be getting the same answer. But for this case here, Okay, I purposely changed a few parameters so that you are able to understand this. For example, the distance okay, will be 2,000 meter. So I need to convert this 2,000 meter to kilometer, which is 2. The frequency is 400 megahertz. So over here, so when I actually punch my calculator, I should be able to get that the free space path loss equation is 90.5 dB. Okay, so from here, you can see that a simple calculation can anticipate or estimate the loss in between the transmitter and receiver by using this free space path loss equation. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.